Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. goes until uh, midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time, and, uh, you know, every week we like to check in with an old friend that we like. Ladies and gentlemen, he's lean, he's trim, he's, uh, are you still trim, Larry? I haven't seen you in a while. 167 pounds, I'm still jogging six miles every day today, so I'm fairly trim for my age, yes. Hmm, fairly trim for your age, okay, mm -hmm. so, uh, and how old are we now? Uh, we're well into Medicare, so. Okay, so isn't Medicare great? Yeah, it's, uh, they should have, uh, well, I guess they want to, some people think they should get it for everybody, maybe that will work. Yeah, well, uh, something like that, you know. But everybody says to me, oh, you know, Medicare, it's a terrible thing. I, 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 you know, these right-wingers, and I go, wait till you get it. You're going to love it, you know. Um, of course, you have to have a supplemental plan. Do you have one? No, I do not. And uh, although I got a check with, uh, you said SAG sometimes has like senior you, performer you, you benefits. Might, you might, yes, you might check because you do have some SAG. You are a member of SAG or have been a member yeah. of SAG. Uh, you might check with them, really, because, you know, uh, uh, Medicare only takes care of 80%. The other... Uh, other 20% has to be taken care of by you. And so, therefore, there are a lot of insurance companies ready to sell you, you know, insurance at $200 a month uh, to take care of that. Um, and, uh, yes, and 20% can't bankrupt you since every medical procedure costs a zillion dollars. Well, if you went in, let's say, let's say, let's say, God forbid you should get cancer and they had to give you the big cancer operation. And the total cost comes to, uh, oh, let's just conservatively say $60,000, all right? Well, that's fine, but what's 20% of $60,000? Uh, Twelve grand. Twelve grand. That's a lot of money for a senior citizen to be putting out of his pocket, especially a senior citizen who makes his living as a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, I mean, that's not, that's not any good. Um but uh, uh, anyway, so uh, we, well, Medicare was yeah. uh, that's LBJ. Yeah, yeah. And a good trivia question was who was the first person to sign up for uh, Medicare? Uh, but, 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 uh, was it LBJ? Uh, it was Harry Truman. It's Harry Truman. Oh, okay. Well, I knew it was something yeah. like that. You know, LBJ went out to Missouri to uh, sign him up for the first person. Oh, really? Yep. Well, look at what good it did to him. <laughs> he was dead seven years later. <laughs> oh, oh, seven years later? Yeah. Wow. You know, I, 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 do you have a fear of death? Oh, huge. Although, I, as you get older, sometimes I was so freaked out before this trip last week that I just thought if I went to sleep tonight and didn't wake up, I think that would be good. I, I just, I, I've always had a great fear of death, and that's why I don't handle you know, diagnoses that well, or even pending diagnoses, because at my age, which is almost reaching 80, you wake up every morning saying, what is it that's going to get me? Exactly. Every you know, morning. What's, because, or well, what's going to hurt today? I mean, at my age, I mean, you know, the good news is I've lived this long. The bad news is I've lived this long. <laughs> because as you live this long, you are suddenly prone to diseases that heretofore you at least maybe didn't have to consider, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I feel everything's slowly going away, you know. And I have a one major medical thing, which I'm not going to talk about, that uh, only uh, affected me because of my age. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, anybody who sits around and says, oh, I pray to God in heaven, well, you know, if there was a God... Would you start falling apart this badly in later years? Wouldn't the God say, 
hey, listen, you're getting older. I'm going to make things easier for you, not rougher. <laughs> and I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you run. I don't care how much you do push-ups. I don't care how much you stick to a vegetarian regimen or whatever your thing is. You can still get cancer. Sure. You know, you can still get some debilitating disease. Um, and I figure if I get past some of these problems that I've got, uh, I'm just going to start traveling. I told girlfriend, I got to start. We got to start traveling, because uh, I'm not going to be able to travel that much longer. I'm not going to be able to. I remember when we were in China, we went to the uh, uh, the rice fields, and you had to walk up this path that went straight up a hill for maybe a mile, maybe a little longer. And I walked. We walked the whole thing, and I did it okay. I don't know if I could do that today. You know. I don't know if I have the strength to do that today. Of course, they do have people that if you pay them 25 bucks, they put you in a cart and they carry you up to the top. <laughs> and I kept thinking to myself, what a bunch of lazy fucks. But now I'm thinking, if we go back there, I'm getting one of those, right? Yeah, I bet there's a lot of heart attacks on that hill. Jeez. I would imagine. I would imagine. Uh, it was worth it, though, when we got to the top. It was just breathtaking. You know, that's that's the Chinese for you. Yeah. Um, so anyway, what, do you uh, you know you're not a political comedian? But, no, not that I. Was, uh, but do you I believe that the will durst? And that, it's such a hard sell. You know, you're going to lose close to half the audience, no matter what side you take. So. Yeah. So what do you what? Uh, uh, so yeah, you're, you're going to lose half the audience, but you've got to have an opinion. You do pay attention to it, don't you? Yeah, although I'm trying to, uh, I just find, I find both sides so annoying these days. Maybe they time for a new party. I don't know. I, I, both sides, you're right, are annoying. They're, they're, uh, I mean, I'm, you, you can, uh, Trump obviously uh, is a, an oaf, but uh, the, the people on the left seem like they're a little crazy too, so. What was it? Um, uh, Tom Friedman in the New York Times wrote today that, the Democrats, if they want to win, should ignore really going after Trump and just talking to the issues and the things that people want to talk about. Talk about how you're going to get people more jobs, how you're going to help their health plans, how you're going to save the money, how you're going to boost the economy. In other words, don't pay any attention to Trump. That it just And just, just play your own game. But the minute you keep going after Trump, he comes back with his tweets, and his base gets all revved up. And that it doesn't do you any good to do that. The better thing is just play your own game, tell people what you're going to do for them, appeal to their civility, and say, you know, we need to bring America together in a more civil tone, things like that. But don't go after Trump. Oh, he's a racist, he's an oaf, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is a racist, and he is an oaf. There's no question about that. I have no doubt. I don't think you do either. Uh, I mean, these statements he's made in the last uh, couple of weeks and so on that were racist were just beyond the pale, you know. So, and I say, by the way, Thomas Friedman wrote today, but this happens to be about a week a week later. So, fuck you. Uh, anyway, um, so um, uh, we were talking about 1939, and we still can't remember the other movies from that year. Okay, so it's uh, uh, what's the Judy? I always forget that title. The uh, wait, 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 is it great. The rainbow. The rainbow. Oh, uh, uh, Wizard, uh, of Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Gone with the wind. It's got to be Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Thirty-nine movies. I think you might be right. Yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Great nineteen thirty-nine movies. There we go. There we go. A whole bunch of them. Got them all. Got them all. Movies in nineteen thirty-nine. Wizard of Oz. Okay, Gone with the Wind. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. You were right about that. Stagecoach. Stagecoach. Wuthering Heights. Dark really? Victory with Betty Davis. Ninochka with uh, Greta Garbo. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Uh, only Angels Have Wings. I don't remember that. Gunga Din. Was 1939. 
Um, Dusty Rides Again, The Young Mr. Lincoln uh, by John Ford, and The Women. That's a pretty good bunch of movies in one year. Wow, that's amazing. You know, that, that was like, uh, that was ground zero for movie making. Uh, just uh, slightly after the silent era, when movies finally learned that they could talk and that they could really be great vocal drama as well as visual. You know, because I don't want to demean silent films. I love silent films. I think there were some great movies made. In fact, people out there, if you have not seen silent, if you say you love movies and you haven't seen silent films, you're missing some of the great movies. I love silent films, yeah. You know, the only thing is they're difficult to watch in most cases because to begin with, there's some kind of scuzzy print running around. And secondly... The music for these films was done by a full-sized orchestra when they did their initial engagements in places like New York City. Uh, there would be a full 80-piece or orchestra in the pit playing the music to the film. God, that would be so expensive. Well, I saw it done recently. I went back to California uh, over in Oakland at the, uh, what's the, what's the theater over there, the big uh, theater in Oakland? The Param Paramount. Paramount, yeah. They had a showing of Abelgans's. Oh, Napoleon. Yeah, five and a half hour Napole <laughs> Napoleon, which is a silent film. And then they brought in uh, um, Carl Davis, who wrote a score for it. And they had a full, I, I think it was at least 60 piece orchestra playing the music to it. This is for five and a half hours these musicians are playing. It was. Spectacular! It was yeah, it just incredible, breathtaking. So you know, you when you see silent films, you forget the context in which they were originally shown. Now what they do is they find some guy with a piano who goes ding 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 ding, you know. And um, sometimes they now get like TCM commissions orchestras to create scores for these silent films, but. Um, the fact was that originally they would play with a big orchestra in, a, in, in, the, in places like New York and Los Angeles and uh, Chicago, places like that. And then when they went to smaller markets, you would have a, maybe a small orchestra there. When you got to the hinterlands, you got down to organs and pianos. You know, And uh, that was the cheesy way of watching a silent film. You know, So... Uh, uh, if you ever get a chance uh, 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 rent or get some of these films have been scored by say Carl Davis there are a whole bunch of them out there uh, and you will see the value of a full orchestra playing the music behind these films also some of these prints have been restored so they don't look and they're projected you know how they always used to look kind of jerky like everybody was moving fast Yeah. the mm -hmm. reason for that was is these films were film uh, at 18 frames per second. When sound came in, they went to 24 frames per second to accommodate the sound because they needed more speed to get a better sound. Uh, when they finally started showing silent films again or making prints of they would do them on a 24-frame machine. And that's the reason we were always sped up. So a lot of these films have been slowed down to their original speed, and they look fine. Everybody looks very natural, especially when they didn't have the hand-cranked cameras anymore. They had the uh, motorized cameras that would keep a constant speed. So it was, it was amazing. It was just, it's just amazing if you get one of these films and then you watch it. There are some great films to watch. Uh, uh, the, the Greed by Eric von Stroheim is probably one of the epics of of the of the genre, uh, but you can also go to films like uh, what was the uh, the Long Parade, which was a war picture in like 1934. That is maybe one of the best war pictures ever made. Um, or the Big Parade, excuse me, not the Long Parade, the Big Parade, one of the greatest uh, 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 silent films ever made about war. I mean, it just it grips you as you watch it. So. And people say, well, I don't like silent films because they don't talk. And I go, well, you go to see a Marvel movie. How much do they talk in that? Mm -hmm. You know, 
there are a lot of explosions and people are running around and they're flying over each other and all that. But how much real discourse is going on in the film? So I just wonder how if that was hard to act and direct in a silent film because they're I guess they're probably doing the dialogue, but uh, uh, not knowing anyone's going to hear I, it. I wish I were a lip reader. I, I'd tell you if they were. I hear that they were kind of using the dialogue, but that sometimes they were just ad libbing. You know, I love you, I love you, I love you. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, and there were some there were some performances that were understated. They weren't broad, you know? Um, yeah, you think most of them would over emote, but they don't. Yeah, you know, there's a, a picture called The Crowd, uh, which is uh, towards the end of silent films, and it's about the love and the love history between two people as they meet and marry and have a kid, and then they fall apart, and then they come back together, and it's a really, it's a really emotionally wrought film. It's all done like you were thinking that they were doing the sound film. I mean, it was it was very measured acting. Uh, it wasn't over emoting or anything like that. And it's a, it's an absolutely great movie. But here's what happened to, to um, here's what happened to movies that ruined it. What ruined movies was sound, and it didn't ruin it because all of a sudden you had to have actors talking and so on and so forth. You also had to have the technology for them to talk. And in the beginning, the cameras were so noisy that they had to put them in a cage, in literally a padded room, cage kind of room, kind of booth, and then shoot through glass at the actors because the, the cameras made so much noise it would be picked up by the microphones. Um, and the other part of the t problem with the technology was that you needed a microphone. Where do you put the microphone? Well... Uh, they didn't have boom mics in those days, but they would, like, put them behind. If you notice, uh, some of the early sound films are all sitting at a table and they're all talking into a radio or talking into a vase or something like that because that's where the microphone was. <laughs> so what it did is that movie silent films had come, become really what we would call moving pictures. I mean, they were the height of, of movement and uh, you know, emoting and things like that. And they, 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 it was terrific. It was just terrific. And they had gotten photography down and angles, and, you know, uh, the Germans especially were very good with movement of the camera and so on. The minute sound came in, the camera didn't move anymore. And so for at least a year or two, until somebody came up with what they called a self-blimped camera, in other words, it could run, but it would run silently because it had the padding inside, until they had the uh, self blimp camera, uh, movies didn't move much. And uh, that ruined, a lot of people felt, ruined the art of motion picture making. Wow. So uh, that, uh, that's kind of an interesting, if you go back and watch yeah, some of the early 1939 <laughs> film, I mean, you watch The Jazz Singer, there's not a lot of movement in The Jazz Singer. And by the way, you know why sound was invented? It wasn't invented so people could talk in movies. That wasn't the reason it was invented at all. It was invented because of what I said earlier, that orchestra that was in the pit in New York. Well, now you could hear that orchestra in Boise because you yeah. had sound. And so they did it for the sound and the sound effects. In fact, the first sound picture ever wasn't the jazz singer. It was Don Juan with John Barrymore. And it was all music and sound effects. And everybody was amazed by it. Now, they had a prologue, by the way, when they showed Don Juan, especially in New York. And it was a bunch of uh, vaudeville acts doing their vaudeville acts. And they were singing and talking and doing stuff like that. Nobody ever thought that this was the way you did sound. They just thought, oh, well, you can, now you can sing and you can dance. You know, The only thing that made the jazz singer the first talkie was at one point, Al Jolson, before he starts singing, says... Uh, at first he does a thing where he talks to his mother when he's at the piano. That's the first time he talks <laughs> in that film. And then uh, he says, you ain't heard nothing yet. And then he sings Toot, Toot, Tootsie Goodbye. And everybody went, these are talkies. And everybody at Warner's is looking at each other and saying, you mean we can use them to make people talk? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so uh, talk was an afterthought. 
It wasn't the reason why they invented sound. They invented sound so they wouldn't have to, so they could have orchestras out in Boise. So you learn something every day, right? Uh, yes, uh, and uh, I was thinking, God, that had to be—you had to—that had to be a tough job. The guy that had to hand crank the camera. <laughs> Well, the hand cranking, okay, here's another piece of trivia for you. You know, all the early films were done by cameramen who cranked the camera. They literally cranked it at a, at a given rate. Now you say, well, how did they get that given rate? In their mind, they had a song they knew, and they would think it as they were cranking, you know. Can oh, town okay. lady sing this song, do-da, do-da. And, and they would crank to that music in their head and that's how they got a steady crank but you know i mean uh, if they over cranked the, the people were slow and if they under cranked the people were jerky yeah that's quite once, a skill once you got to the movie theaters they had i think electric projectors and they could then project them at a certain uh, speed uh so that, that's you know um so there's a little history for you film now you can go tell people you know that. And you know everything about movies. Only you would know this. No, I don't know everything about movies. You know, I got this friend, uh, Shecky, who you know. Uh, and well, I've heard. I, I want to meet him. He's well, a, I'm surprised you never met him when you did the Letterman show. He never, I never met him. Yeah, I, you know, wow. I see his baseball card collection. It, 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 amazing, supposedly. I've never seen it because I don't care about baseball. But you do. Well, I, I've lost interest in baseball, but I still like the cards. Why have you lost interest in baseball? Or, or well, it's just, it's, oh, my God, it's more boring than monogamy. It's just, it's just <laughs> tedious. <laughs> I can't. I lost interest in all sports, but baseball just uh, moves along at the pace of a glacier. It really is slow. You mean the game? Yeah, and I read that uh, they might be having problems because the uh, young younger people really show no interest in baseball because it's so slow. Well, it's not a slam-bang sport like football, okay? But I always like baseball better because it's a leisurely game. You know, you go out, to the, ball, you go out to the ballpark with your friends and you sit there on a nice sunny day and you talk to each other and you commune with each other and you say nice things to each other and then every now and then something goes on out in the field and you get excited, and then it's back to talking to each other, eating hot dogs, and drinking beer. <laughs> you know, now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's a pretty good um, way to handle the situation. You know, it's, it's a pretty nice day out in the sun. Um, but it is a slower game. They, try, they did speed it up a few years ago, didn't they? They did something to speed it up. Uh, they made the pitchers, I think, move a little quicker, but it's still the games are like three and a half hours. They used to, part of because of TV and the commercials, the older days they could get games in an, an hour and a half. Yeah, so they about double the length. But. but they they sped up the game somehow. They they made it more. Here's here's the problem that that baseball has had. Again, the, the technology is the reason baseball. Fell, fell second to football in being a spectator sport. And the reason was the television came in. when It was a, it was the perfect sport for radio. You know, you could make a game more exciting than it was if you had a good sportscaster calling it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Baseball, uh, great on radio, not a, and TV. Uh, not, yeah, you're right. And too, too slow for TV. Football, on the other hand, is fast enough for TV. You know, slam, bang, running, going back and forth, up and up and up, and boom, people crashing into each other. It's a TV sport. And if you notice, when football started becoming very popular, rather than just being some kind of college thing that people followed, uh, was when, the, when, uh, when, after all was said and done, um, the... the um, you know, football was the, the sport that, that played best on television. So that's why it became so popular. Yeah. I hate football. I think it's kind of klutzy and, and dumb. Yeah. And yeah. Certainly more violent. Uh, baseball has the best union in the world. Uh, yeah. There, if you get called up for one game in baseball, never never play again, you get, you get health care for life. Just one game? One game, if you call for one game. 
And if you if you get into 40 games, you qualify for a pension. It's only a quarter of a season now, but and they got I think the average the the rookie salary is over half a million dollars. So there's definitely money in the game. Wow. Well, if I come back again, I'll come back as a baseball player. Yes. Okay, it sounds like a good idea to me. Hey, listen, looks like we're coming close to the close here. Good talking to you again, Bubs. Always good talking to you, buddy. Always a wonderful thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bobbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's Alex. Here I am again tonight, uh, uh, suffering through my uh, the, the, what I've been going through uh, with depression. Um, uh, I, you know, I, 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 uh, uh, this, I, well, I won't say it, but I, 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 today I really woke up totally depressed and totally uh, exasperated by everything. And, and couldn't get my mind off this whole thing about having a meeting with a doctor next week for a second opinion and what it could possibly be and what's the good news, what's the bad news, I assume all the bad news. All this going around in my head and it wouldn't stop. And I, I just went, I, you know, I just stopped already. And I went through this whole thing. So finally I talked to Shecky today and Shecky said, tomorrow night take a Xanax, okay? Let it just knock you out. And it'll probably make you wake up in a slightly more docile mood. So I'm going to do that tonight. But I hate to come here every night and tell you that I'm just I, just profoundly depressed. It was just amazing. I, I was amazed how, how depressed I was. So, But that's no big deal. You don't care. It doesn't matter. Uh, and and uh, soon uh, you won't have Alex to kick around anymore, you know. Uh, one way or another, you know, my my ears are slowing up. I mean, I um, if, if if let's face it, if, if prostate cancer probably will not kill me, you know, it will make my life miserable for the rest of my life because I'll always have to deal with it if I have it. But uh, uh, something else will kill me, and and you know, I might go into a dementia or whatever. And, and you guys uh, will be missing just a great guy to talk with because I won't even remember what I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, the lines are open and we're waiting for people to call. It's, it's, a, it's a little ritual that we do here. Uh, and then we try to get together a citizen panel. And uh, who knows I'm going to get anybody tonight. Um, you know, I haven't heard from him in a while. Uh, yeah, it's Rob. Uh, but I don't know where he is. But... You know, baseball's out there. He's a big baseball fan. So, anyway, come on, start calling, huh? I don't want to have to keep uh, 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 doing a tap dance here, waiting for you to call. You know what the problem is? I don't think anybody listens to the first half hour of the show. I think if one night I don't go on at ten o'clock and go on at ten thirty, nobody will know I didn't do the first half hour. You know, that's the way I feel about it. So. You know, who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, anyway, so um, anyway, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Josh Wheeler. Oh, Josh, uh, Josh was here last night. So I'm not even going to have to put him up uh, because um, uh, already, uh, let's see, if you turn on your camera there, uh, that would be good. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Josh, are you there? Josh, are you there? Do you have me? Yeah, uh, I have you. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've, uh, now I think we're seeing your picture. We got no, we have. Yeah, there we go. Now uh, let's see here. And Scott, Scott, are you there? Oh, Scott's there. Okay, let me let me go over here, and I'll put him in the number two spot, uh, so that. Uh, 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 Phil, if he calls, is going to have to take another spot. Okay, well, let me see here. There we go. There's Scott. Hello, Scott. Hey, Alex. How are you? I'm 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 okay. Oh, here comes Charlie Wallace. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to add Charlie Wallace to the mix, so I have to go over to the 
other <laughs> template here to do that. Uh, people wonder what I'm doing. I'm just getting all these people into a place on the on the deal here. And then I do <laughs> Diago transition, and there we go. See, now we got. Oh wait a minute. I I I see what I did there. I got the wrong uh, uh, the wrong person in number four slot. I want to have uh, Charlie Wallace. I don't know why Josh Wheeler got in there, but anyway, there we go. There's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hi. How are you? Did, did Phil say he wasn't calling tonight? No, I don't think so. You know. Uh, well, well, we can only hope. Uh, anyway, uh, are you back home now, uh, uh, Scott? I thought you were yep. out on the road, right? Yes. Where were you? Yep. I was up in Iowa mm -hmm. in the uh, heartland of the corn country. Yeah. Yeah. And... You like it up there? It was very pleasant, very nice. We, my uh, sister and brother-in-law, they don't watch TV. Yeah. So I got very little news, very little Trump. It was very relaxing. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Well, just like uh, just like Beetlejuice, you say his name. <laughs> uh, I called when you opened the lines and said somebody call, and uh, it went declined. It went declined. Yeah, kind of like my credit cards, you know. It, geez, <laughs> that, that's, that's always something that really depresses you when whenever you go somewhere and it's declined, whether it's like that or whether it's your yeah. credit card or whatever. Um, and then you find out your credit card was wasn't declined for any <clears throat> real reason; it was just some kind of mistake, right? Meanwhile, or or the magnetic strip didn't read properly, or y yeah, you know, yeah, 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 so. or the chip uh, didn't do what it had to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's... What, what, what's worse is when you're on the road and you're getting gas and you put yeah. your card in there mm -hmm. and you pull, you do the thing and you put in your zip code or whatever and it says, wrong, do it again, do it again. Finally, it's like, damn, I really need some gas to get home. <clears throat> but uh, so I had to go into the attendant and they put the chip in and it worked fine in there. Yeah. But I did something wrong or the pump was bad or whatever. Well, I or or I, somebody was stealing your data, uh, yeah, on the on the pump. Well, it's been yeah. a, it's been a while <laughs> since I've actually had to use a car, so I don't I don't know this problem. But I could imagine that part of it has to do with the fact that those pumps are outside getting dirty and everybody, every manner of person with the stuff on their hands and everything is getting stuff in there and it's getting all gunked up. It could be, yeah. yeah. I think I'll uh, go check my credit card because what Phil's just said, no. <laughs> Here, here's, here's the thing that's been happening to me lately. Uh, once every couple of years, uh, a card of mine expires, all right? Oh, and so yeah. they, so they send me a new card. So I then go on to every place I can possibly think of where I use that card online and put in the new PIN number, the new number, the three-digit number or whatever, and the, yep. and, and the new expiration date. But there's always something I miss, usually yeah. two or three of them. And then I get something. I got something from Apple the other night. Uh, oh, you want to keep getting your... Uh, your uh, uh, extra space, your extra your space or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but your a card is expiring, and so I had to go and fix that. And then Network Solutions, which uh, uh, takes care of uh, uh, the kind of the gatekeeper for for websites for the URLs and so on. Uh, they wanted more money out of me, but they said your your card's expiring, and I went, oh, I forgot them too. You know, yeah. so there's always somebody you're forgetting, and you always get a. a they, they, I, they, I just wait till they send me a nasty letter. You know, it's not, uh, not a nasty letter. I'll tell you, I, I, I something happened to me today. Uh, uh, besides my horrible depression that I had today, this morning especially, uh, it was almost debilitating. Uh, but I don't want to get into that. Well, I do, but I don't want to. So, we, well, anyway. Uh, I get this. Th I ordered uh, some print for my ink, ink for my printer, and I bought it from uh, Amazon uh, because I found that the ones that I hand bought that were sitting up in the closet for months and months and months wouldn't work in there for some reason. HP wouldn't allow them to work. They don't like third-party inks to work. 
So I, I ordered a, a new set that said it has the new chip in there, so it should work. And then I get a notification from the company saying, don't update your firmware if they ask you to, because our inkjets won't work with the new firmware. And I had updated the software. I didn't update the firmware, but I thought I had updated the firmware. So I ordered some from HP, which was like, these were $36. The HP inkjets total, this is at Amazon, which is cheaper than anywhere else, about $110. Mm -hmm. So I then got them, and I put them in anyway, and they work because the firmware hadn't been changed, so they work. But every time I go to the program that shows me you know, how much ink I have and whatever, there's a big sign that says, this is not an HP authorized inkjet with a big <laughs> warning sign on it, you know, the triangle. And I'm going, fuck you, you know? And then I printed something out on it. I printed a whole page of color and it looks great. And I went, you know, these guys really have a fucking racket going. Oh you know? yeah, they, 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 uh, uh, they're like drug dealers. Yeah, you know. well, it's the old razor blade thing. Yeah. You know, we'll give you the razor for free because how cheap are printers? Printers are dirt cheap. I bought this, yeah. printer, you know, this printer, which has everything. But they don't come with a full cartridge. They come with a starter cartridge. Right. So you, you get like eight and a half pages of no, shit. Oh, no, then... no. I got, I got starter cartridges Yeah. with this, okay? They lasted me maybe six months. Really? Yeah. They kept going and going. I went, what, what's with this? These are usually the ones that, th you know. Yeah. four pages and you they're gone so well it's, it's cheaper just to order another printer then and take the starter cartridges you're, you're, you're and throw away the printer actually <laughs> this printer cost me exactly what the, a full set of inks would have cost me from hp yeah. you're absolutely right phil i didn't think yeah. about that <laughs> but after a while i'd be up to my ass in printers here you know <laughs> Do they have a uh, printer, uh, you know, e-disposal uh, bin or something at your building? But you know, but I mean, if, or, or you put it in the lobby and you might put free on it, brand new. But, but you're right. Every six months, I could just buy a new printer, you know, yeah. and it would be the same price. Yeah. But uh, really? unfor um, unfortunately, yeah. you don't. Also, in the old days, I used to need two or three printers, you know, one right. for each computer. Now, because of the Wi-Fi thing and everything, I can print anywhere from anywhere in my house. I can print, I think I can print from my iPad when I'm somewhere else yeah. onto this printer, you know. Wow. So. Uh, the yeah. printer behind me, mm -hmm. nine cartridges. I believe there are 85 mil in each cartridge, the amount of ink. Uh, and each cartridge is $60. Mm -hmm. So it costs 500 and change to repopulate that printer. But how often do you have to do that? Uh, I print, I don't know, four prints a month, maybe five. I would say uh, a year. A year? Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, a lot, that's a lot of fucking ink. Yeah. Well, you know, you print a 17 by 22 Yeah, but inch. I mean, that's, that's, a lot, that's a lot of money for ink. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, if you get a laser printer, those things are uh -oh. just, you know, $300 for, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I use lasers at work, and even if they're color, I, I print black and white, you know, yeah. uh, just uh, because I don't need color at work. Well, I'll tell you something. i got to tell you something, though, about HP. But, but they were the first ones that came out with the laser printers. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, my business manager had one, and I, I was jealous. You know, I had to have what my business manager had. So I went and got one. Okay. So now I've got this uh, HP laser printer, the first one they ever put out. And it, and, and they were built like a brick shit house. Well, this no. is what I'm saying. They, they, yeah. It would print, and it would print. And then I would put in a new cartridge, and it would print, and it would print. Now I've had this thing for five or six years, and I'm going, I want a new, I want a new printer, you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> the connection won't work after a while. Well, no, you, know, you might these, have a serial no, port. No, these things, these, this one went forever. And I talked to somebody at HP who yeah. said that at HP, when they wanted a new printer and could ju had to justify getting a new printer for the, their, their little cubby hole or whatever, they would throw paper clips into it. <laughs> and it would still work. And, and, it, and many times it was still working. They said those things just kept going and going and going and yeah. going. 
I think I paid for one of those, you know, real super heavy duty ones, twelve hundred bucks back in eighty eight or so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they they were fantastic, and I used it up to the point mm-hmm. where the port wasn't supported uh, uh, on the uh, on the computer. Yeah. So they you know they went from the uh, serial port. It was a big Picked hunker, the you know, with clips on the. Um, Wait a minute, yeah. Let me just turn something off here. Let yeah. me hold on. There we go. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, and then the, that I think it was called a parallel port. Yeah. And then uh, then they eliminated yeah. that, and then uh, eventually they went to like USB. But uh, uh, you know, yeah, there was a point at which yeah. you couldn't yeah. you, the computer and the printer wouldn't talk to each other, especially with the serial well, uh, the uh, yeah. parallel port. Uh, this thing I got was an HP Office Jet, and it cost yeah. me. It's got like you know, it's the two layers, and it's got a scanner, and it's got uh, fax in it. I can do faxes with it. I can do send ten, uh, yeah, ten three in one, four ten in pages one. of faxes at once. You know, it's just amazing. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, hundred and five bucks. Yeah, you know, I, I bought the one that uh, uh, what's his name recommended, um, Rob. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it was sixty nine bucks, and uh, you know the the ink lasts long enough. Yeah, well, this uh, thing this thing is just you know I have no problem with it. My old printer I used to get jammed all the time and so on. This thing's no jamming. It's fine, you know. Yeah. So uh, I uh, you know it's it, but uh, you know folks uh, just go get don't you know don't uh, upgrade the firmware, uh, but. Uh, Buy the cheaper ink. It it works just as well, you know. Um, Doesn't leak or uh, no, no. What about these guys that refill it themselves? So you buy the. Well, well, these are these are these are refilled. By someone else. By someone else. Yeah. But you can also buy the ink, and squirt it into the uh, into those things. Yeah, I'm I I, I'm too lazy for that. Yeah. You know, I'm too lazy for that. But. uh, uh, th- that whole ink deal is just an absolute sham, you know. I mean, how much does that ink cost HP? I mean, is it what is it? The cocaine in there or something? You know? <laughs> Cartridge yeah. costs more. You can probably make the ink cheaper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah fucking I, coke's probably cheaper than the ink. Yeah, it is. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. It, if you were to go by the size of the ink, okay. And the size of Coke, I think you would find, in fact, that um, uh, the Coke uh, was um, cheaper. Is 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 cheaper than the than the ink? You know. Well, you know, look at water. If you buy bottled water, uh, yeah. gasoline is less expensive than bottled water. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, let's see. We've been joined by Kevin's here, and there goes Kevin. No, Kevin's here. <clears throat> Let me see here. Let me turn up my. Uh, my fan I was here. just listening to you talk about printers. Yeah. Yeah. I bought an Epson ET4750. Yeah. yeah. Best thing I ever did. Really? Absolutely. It cost uh, like 300 bucks for the printer. Yeah. But they have, uh, they're called Eco Tanks. Uh-huh. And I've had it for over a year, and I've gotten halfway through the ink. Hmm. Really, and it's still only halfway done. And then they got these. Uh, uh, Wait a minute, he's going to. So is is this the thing I was talking about, where you squirt it into the ink? No, no. This oh, is no. this is a refill. Yeah. Fourteen bucks, and yeah. it lasts you over a year. Fourteen dollars. Yeah. And I'll tell you what is the best thing I ever did. The the printer is a little more expensive. It scans, it prints. It does, it's called an ET. It's an eco tank. Really? I like Epson. Uh, Epson's a good printer. Yeah, I, I had gone away from them for a while, but the last one I bought, I looked into these things, and it's uh, I don't know if I can do this or not. But it's yep. that. Let me see here. I got it. Yeah. Can't, I can't pull yeah, my I camera apart. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But right there, it tells you how much ink you got left right there. And I'm only at the halfway point, and I bought it over about a year ago. And mm-hmm. it doesn't jam up on you? Never. <laughs> has yet to jam up on me. Okay. We've also been joined by Tony. There's Tony. Okay. 
here, here's uh, here, 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 and Tony here, does a lot of the paper, printers. It does, he's got it wallpaper. Great. Here, here's the inkjet <laughs> printer. Here's the printer for the uh, inkjet. Okay, that's one. It's one of the cars. These are comes with two years. Of there, there are three, problem. three of these, and then a big black one. Okay, uh, how much, how much do you figure that costs HP to make, even with the ink inside? Probably, but eighty probably. cents under a dollar. I'm sure. <laughs> right. You know. Well, I'm, see, and that's what pissed me off is. The, the ink costs so god darn much. Yeah, but here's what here's what happens now. Uh, let me ask this ethical question. Uh, HP, they warn me, do not upgrade the firmware. That would be the 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 firmware. Who wants ink? Yeah. I got tons of it. <laughs> the firmware in the uh, in the uh, in the machine itself, not the software, but the firmware. Don't upgrade it because if you upgrade it, they've their latest firmware upgrade makes it so uh, you can't use our ink. And I'm thinking, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> you know? There's something, there's some kind of antitrust thing or whatever where you're making it f impossible for third parties to create <clears throat> ink for the machine. You well, know? you know what else was weird with HP is I tried doing, you know, going to Costco and getting them refilled there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... You know, there's a little reset button on the cartridge that you, you you had to reset. Yeah. But every time I brought them back, they they didn't reset it or it didn't work right, and the and the printer kept saying it was out of ink all the time. Yeah. It never would re, it would never give you an accurate reading that you needed ink or not. Wow. And that's what drove me ape shit with the HPs. Yeah. Well, I I, I bought you know, brand new HP. Yeah cartridges and you put them in and it still says it's low on ink yeah well, yeah that's well, what used to I, drive I just, me crazy i just you buy ink uh, you don't need it well this one seems to be pretty good that way but um this uh i just um they have a thing built into the into this office jet where if you want to subscribe to their ink service yeah it, well, send it, it, it recog you send you give them a credit card and it oh, recognizes yeah. when you're running out of ink and then yeah, it communicates cool. with the company, and it automa they automatically send you. Yeah, they've had that for a while. New ink. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, but uh, you got to buy. Know. Yeah, if you want to pay a hundred dollars, hundred and twenty dollars for ink. Yeah, their price for the ink. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, yeah. And, 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 oh so it's not fair trade. Yeah. Well, does anybody use a uh, nine thirty two, uh, five sixty four? <laughs> I don't know. Or 564 <laughs> XL. I'll That's send these to you for free. Mine's a mine's a mine's a 92. A what? Um, uh, 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 oh, uh, 952 XL. So I got 932s. I got 901. I got five. It's like we're sitting around seeing if we won the lottery. It's a like yeah. bingo. <laughs> bingo. I'll send them to you for free if you want them. And and you see on the thing they've got a they've got a chip, if you can see yeah. there. Uh, I, I'm, and I'll show it to our. Yeah, I see the chip. And the chip, uh, the chip is that's what prevents them from you know they have to have a chip that's that goes <laughs> along with this. So, uh, I just think there's something wrong with that. I mean, I think forcing us to have to buy their ink at their yeah. inflated prices, is wrong. Now, if you don't like that. Then sell me the printer at a higher price. Don't give me the security of saying, "Oh wow, look at what I'm getting for $105." You know, I'll be happy to pay $200 for it. Just let me put in any ink cartridges I want to in there, because yeah. I've never I've I've used these these third-party uh, ink jets for uh, cartridges for a while, at least since I've been out of work at Sirius, and I've never had a problem with them. They've been well, they I wised just up perfectly. on the lasers. The lasers at work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this time, I uh, I went over to Fry's and I'm looking on my phone and I see uh, you know I see the different models that they've got there. Yeah. So I and I needed a printer now, and so I looked up how much their car laser cartridges were uh, for the full size ones, the ones that give you you know the maximum amount of paper uh, yeah. printing. Yeah. Because I don't like changing them often, so. Uh, you know, I looked it up, and they got some that cost two hundred and fifty dollars. You know, the, the uh, Fuji's and and those. I bought Samsung 
because the cartridge lasted the longest and uh, it was reasonably priced. And yeah. so was the so was the printer. Well, I think the, I, the I other sat there the, and yeah. first. the other question we don't have an answer to is um, uh, uh, how much, how long do these cartridges last? I mean, are these third-party cartridges lacking enough a lot of ink, or or, or or do they have the same amount of ink? I think they have the same amount of ink because what they do is the uh, the cartridge. There were there were several, and they all looked a little bit different on them. Uh, but but they uh, they had the same exact cartridge, so I mean you know they would be filling it uh, uh, in there. Oh, I just got a I just got a thing from Amazon. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I just got a piece of mail from Amazon. Here it is. Um, oh, th oh, I wrote them back and said you know thanks for letting me know after I ordered them. Uh, thanks so much for your response. Please do not be worried. Our 952 XL ink cartridges with upgraded chip can work with updated, non-updated printers. Oh, please do not hesitate to reply to our message if you have any issues. Very nice. It's a third party. It's manufactured by Value Toner. Oh. Then, then it must be a good value. But, but I, it's been so long since I ordered those other ink cartridges that wouldn't work that I, I can't really get a hold of, uh, 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 who do you call it, uh, uh, Manufacturer, uh, uh, Amazon, and say, "Give me my money back." So, did they dry out those things? I don't know. I mean, I would imagine, you know, after several centuries, they do. You know, that's when I manager. moved my printer from my old house to this apartment, mm -hmm. I didn't print for about six months. Yeah, and yeah. I had to change all the cartridges. Mm -hmm. I had to flush and clean uh, because the the jets clogged up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't print once a month, uh, you oh, know, shit. you'll ruin the printer. I'd throw that motherfucker right in the trash if I had to do all that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, that, man. It, it, you know, it used to be, I used to have a great, uh, I used to have a great uh, ability at fixing things and figuring out how things work. And now I find it's a lot tougher, you know. I'm getting, a, I'm buying, I bought a thing for, 75 bucks, I don't know if it's going to work. An Elgato switcher where I I have trouble with my uh, with my switcher here that somewhere in the middle of the show it decides not to work. I have it so I can use certain key presses to do things like dissolve from one picture to another like this, folks. You see, doing that. I push one button or right, for switching just like that, another button. Uh, but somewhere in the middle of the show for some reason and I don't know why, it stops working. Okay, I understand that. You know, it's probably got some problem with this free program that I'm using. But this thing, supposedly, I can I can set it to. It has about six buttons on it, and I can set it to have the buttons do the same thing I want to do. So we'll see. But when I first get it, it will be like Martian to me, trying to figure out how to use the goddamn thing. You know. So uh, time will tell. Time will tell. Um, so, um, let me see here. You know, uh, I, um, and, and, uh, certainly Josh, I think would probably agree with me on this. And of course, Phil will agree because it's about me. I'm an agreeable uh, kind of guy. Well, I mean, it's, it's just that I just can't watch MSNBC anymore. <laughs> I, uh, do you feel that way, uh, uh, Charlie? I like the lesbian yeah, page. I quit watching years ago. Huh? <laughs> But yeah, uh, I quit watching I MSNBC it. years ago. Yeah. yeah, what do you mean the lesbian babes? There's only one major les on that network. Yeah, I, I, truthfully, I I don't, I have Sling TV. MSNBC is not one of the uh, uh, allowable things. So. Well, well, I mean, uh, I I don't I'm 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 ashamed, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself, Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I get CNN. I mean, every, every now and then I go over and watch Fox. It should be a guilty pleasure. You know, well, I, I, I can't watch Fox either. I get a, a, a program that I can download and see snippets of Fox, but it's the same five snippets for most of the day. Yeah. So, you know, once you see them, uh, you're done. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it, it uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll turn over there, especially I, I turn over for outnumbered because I'm waiting for the day where those women start going down on each other. <laughs> you know, um, but it, it's uh, it, it's it's uh, quite a quite a show. 
Uh, but I so I mean I go over and I watch Fox every now and then. But I just I just I'm so tired of the fact that they're relentless in yeah. their in their uh, bashing of Trump. Now I'm I'm all for bashing Trump. I have no love for Donald Trump. I love to call him a motherfucking cocksucker, you know, and anything else I can call him. But but I just think that constantly having something you ostensibly call a news station and all you're doing is this counter Trump programming is a bit wrong. I mean even even CNN who gets beaten up a lot by by Trump more than MSNBC does uh, is is less of a Trump basher oddly enough than MSNBC. You know, I can find them marginally better to watch, you know. Yeah. Uh, I watch CBSN and I watch a CBSN, little... a lot of CBSN, because I yeah. find that it's not, then there's no agenda there politically. You know? Not as much. You, I mean, you can tell that the people that uh, are there are left leaning, but they're not doing anything other but, but than you know smiling. You know something? You don't, you don't know that they're left leaning. I'll tell you, for years, uh, Walter Cronkite used to say, "Everybody, I, uh, half the people in America think I'm a conservative, and half the people in America think I'm a liberal." In those gay days, they said Republican, Democrat, right? Yeah. And he said, "Nobody ever. That's because nobody ever knew what po political party I believed in." And he said, "The reason they didn't is because I didn't particularly throw it out there." But everybody imprinted on themselves that if the news wasn't good that day for their side, I was a I was the other side. Side, right. you know. Well, CBSN is as close as you can get to actually getting news yes. rather than opinion. Well, it it, it it they have the news as we have news here. Okay, and like, I like that red and blue. They covered thing that they they, co they covered the the Mueller thing. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the next story is something is happening in Britain and, or something that's happening in Sweden or something is happening in the Mideast. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, an, it's literally it's a news operation. Uh, mm -hmm. MSNBC isn't a news operation. Fox isn't a news operation. CNN would love to be a news operation, but if they find it hard to be, you know, mm -hmm. um, but a CBSN, I think, um, you know, serves that function. It's not as um, involving as I think they could make it. But they're also not ginning up stuff. So it's going to be a little drier than the, uh, than all the other news. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, it's news, though, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, I just find MSNBC is just... I, gee, Ari Melber, Jesus, that guy. One day, I you don't know how what the length of his five day shadow, uh, six o'clock shadow is going to be. He, 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 you know what I'm talking about, Scott? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, how does he look like that every day? No, but but, but it's he, he, one day he's got a five o'clock shadow. The next day he's got a full beard. <laughs> the next day he must grow. Yeah. He must like when he sleeps, it must just go. You know. I mean, but I mean, and I find him obnoxious. I find this guy with the with the uh, with the statistics where he's got his jacket off and he's running around <laughs> saying, "And here in Vermont, and blah 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 blah." Oh, Kornacki. Kornacki. I find him so terrible and so obnoxious that I can't stand him. Now I know if there's somebody at MSNBC listening to me right now, they go, oh, "Well, he's probably a conservative." No, <laughs> no. What what do you think of Katie Turr though? I mean, uh, uh, Katie Turd. Uh, <laughs> Katie Turd. Well, the women, some of them are. I, I, um, there's this. Um, uh, there's one She's woman hot. who was actually a Republican. Republican. She worked uh, for the uh, Bush Nicole administration. Nicole Wallace, I think her name Nicole is. Nicole Wallace, yeah. Uh, and she, I don't think she is anymore because I heard her say today, "I used to be." Yeah, a, she worked for Obama, actually. Yeah. No. Did she? Yeah, yeah. Nicole Wallace worked for Obama. No, no, no. The the, the one that does the six o'clock show. Or that no, she's no, she's on at five with the Deadline White House. Yeah, yeah she, she was, worked for she Obama. Was the communi yeah, she was the communications director for the George W. Bush. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She but she worked for Obama too. Then. I, I heard her say it. But she may have switched sides. You know. Yeah. She, yeah. Uh, last she last never last. worked for Obama that I'm aware of. I mean, I would have yeah. remembered that because she's she's kind of like in a way. 
her presentation is a scorned lover. Yeah. You know. But yeah. she was a uh, she was like a I mean for the first 2 years of Bush's presidency um I mean she was a she was his Kellyanne Conway. I mean she was out there every day. I mean she was a yeah. front man for you know George W Bush. Yeah. You know yeah. and uh but uh, but she has kind of uh um I don't think she's switched sides but she's kind of done the the Joe Scarborough thing, you know, where yeah. she's basically yeah. just said, you know, hey, I'm not a Democrat, but I'm disavowing the Republican Party, you know, it, I guess at least at this time. And they were probably, you know, he did that thing, what, a year or so ago where he said he was leaving the party and going to be an independent or whatever. Well, so well, I had she's kind of that, that I, mold. I had somebody uh, write me. Let me see if I can find it. Wrote me a, uh, a letter yesterday uh, and uh, I'll read it to you. Uh, she says, with all your talk about morality, uh, mortality, I felt like thanking you for entertaining me in the 70s and now before our respective times are up. Thank you very much, Lynn. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, shit. He's got you going. <laughs> me, a 14, 15-year-old female, listening to you from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. on WPLJ in the mid-70s. Yikes. With unbelievable... Drifting in and out of sleep, hearing about Abby Hoffman and hearing some really cool interviews. Now, 57 years old, very conservative female, listening to a bunch of mostly older, mostly incredibly liberal guys talking about prostate cancer and bashing Republicans, etc. Yikes. What the hell? Uh, still drifting in and out of sleep throughout the night, listening to the ramble. Though we have very different opinions... Of, uh, of, of you, I might even be more conservative than Phil, but I. Holy shit! <laughs> but, <laughs> but, conservative but well, she <laughs> thinks she might be more conservative than Phil. She says, "I still think Trump is a big dope." <laughs> uh, I still appreciate uh, others' thoughts and ideas. So thanks for hanging in there and continuing the show, even though you seem to be frustrated with lack of audience. Well, you know. Uh, Did she send a photo? No, no. Uh, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, the reason I read her letter is uh, I, I consider her a true conservative, okay, because several things were her inherent in that letter. Number one, that she doesn't mind hearing other people's opinions. You know, and I often said that I, uh, I, I often trust and, and love talking with a true conservative, which Phil is clearly not. Um, uh, there, and, and, and I don't like talking to liberals. I like talking to lefties. In other words, I like people who's, but who's, who can also talk with people from the other side and listen to other opinions and perhaps argue them. You know, would you agree with me, Josh, with that? I mean, I, that, that's the kind of civil discourse that I enjoy, and that's why I enjoy her writing the way she wrote. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, that, I agree. I mean, I don't have a problem that people you know, don't agree. And I've gone out of my way, I think, many times to try to be clear that even if Phil and I don't agree sometimes, I don't want to attack him personally. And I don't like it if other people do. I, you know, I remember I didn't say anything, but, you know, I remember going through the chat one night because it just happened to be on the screen. And, you know, someone made a comment about Phil's, you know, weight. And I, I, I was just like, why you got to, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, the fuck's it got to do with anything? You know, I mean, it just... It bothered me. I mean, you know, I mean, it was just like, give it up, people. I mean, you don't agree with him. Yeah, well, I, okay, I, I, do, I, I, you know, I, well, you know, I don't, uh, I don't think a Trump Republican is particularly a conservative. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I lean a, you're, a libertarian you're right. in some ways. Libertarian is terrible. And I, uh, I register uh, Republican. I usually vote Republican. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but um, have you, you ever know. voted for a Democrat? Um, I voted for Jerry Brown when he was running for mayor of Oakland mm -hmm. and uh, mistakenly voted for him. Uh, I regret that I voted for him for attorney general uh, of California. And uh, why, why did you regret it? Uh, because of uh, many of the uh, uh, things that he uh 
instituted mm -hmm. uh, as attorney general. But you knew what, when you voted for him, you knew what you were getting, Phil. I mean, it's not, I, like, Jerry, it's mayor, not like Jerry Brown didn't wear his, uh, his uh, no, politics No, I know, but as mayor sleeve. of Oakland, he was exceptional. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, he was, he was good. And uh, that's when I used to go to his place for dinner. He used to have a, uh, had a home uh, there, you know, a little. Yeah, on, on, what was it, on 12th and yeah, something like uh, that. above Sears? Big or space, something? big space. Yeah. And um, um, he would have all his friends over, and, you know, and, and, and it, was a, it was kind of like a, a nice little potluck style dinner. Well, when he moved, he moved up the hill from me when I lived in the Oakland Hills. Yeah. Uh, a, I, a grizzly. Yeah, I mean, I happen to think that Jerry, you know, I Jerry, I learned a great lesson from Jerry. Uh, I had Jerry on when he was running for president, and it was one of those kind of things. You ask a question, he parses the answer, you know, like politicians do. Yeah. Then uh, about, you know, a year later, when he wasn't running for president anymore, I had him on the show again. And all of a sudden, he starts laying into the cops. He starts laying into, the, I think it was the highway patrol he had a boner for at that time. And, and he starts laying into them, and then he's laying into this politician and that. And I, at a, in a break, I, I said to Jerry, I said, Jerry, why weren't you like this when you were running for president, you know? I mean, I think you could have won being this, this snarky. And, and he said, oh, you can't do anything when you're running for president. You've got so many handlers who are telling you, don't say this, don't say that, don't do this, don't do that. And he said, now I'm glad to be able to be like this because this is me, you know. He ran one of the first, he ran one of the first modern campaigns with the 800 number mm -hmm. and, uh, and so forth. I think it was before websites, but uh, he, he had a much more modern uh, technology-oriented campaign when he ran for president than anyone else had had to that time. Yeah, yeah I'll probably be dead before this happens, but uh, I'm going to tell you, you know who's going to be a future president of the United States? No question in my mind. Uh, Gillibrand? No. No. And if he, if he could run right now, he would just do terrifically. But I think he's going to wait. Is Gavin Newsom. Uh, he's got the hair. He's got the looks. <laughs> he's got the yeah. speaking yeah. ability. He's got mm -hmm. the lefty politics to keep liberals really happy. Okay? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I think he he will he will run for president. I mean, there's no question in my mind. Yeah, that's what he's being groomed for. Yeah. How old is he? Is he is he about fifty? Yeah, 50. I think so. But this is the guy. You know, people don't. I never hear anybody really give him the credit he's, he's due. He's under pressure, right? You don't see nobody really. No, talk but here's the thing. He's the guy who, in fact, started the whole gay marriage movement in this country because he, as mm -hmm. mayor of San Francisco. Oh, cool made gay, gay marriage or uh, same-sex marriage legal in the city of San Francisco. And that's the first place it ever happened. That's what kicked it, it all off. And he's never credited with that by the gay community. Nobody holds... He issued marriage right. licenses. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. They should really... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm surprised they don't really rally around him more. Well, they, they, they don't... You know, nobody says, oh, hey, gay marriage. And uh, thanks, Gavin Newsom. But... That's the, that's he's the guy. Not gay. That's the guy who created the germ, you know. Yeah. That created no, a whole movement, and not. now there's virtually no state in the United States you can't go and get married if you're same sex, okay. And that's thanks to Gavin Newsom who started the whole thing, because he he had the guts to do it, and that's the kind of political guts I like people to have, you mm -hmm. know, to do something that is. I would say largely un, un, uh, unpopular. I would say it wasn't that popular in San Francisco, you know. But if San Francisco was one of these cities that go, oh, they want to marry. Okay, fine. You know, um, <laughs> nobody makes a big deal about it. You know, marriage well, is between a man and a woman. Yes. Uh, my thought was, if they want to get married and they want to put up with what uh, straight people have to put up with, fuck them, let them do it. Oh, if they want, to, yeah. I mean, I, I kept saying to my gay friends, "Why the fuck do you want to get married? Look at me, four of them. You know, come on. Uh, you know, that's true. Four times, Alex. Didn't they ever say that? You're right. You tried to talk them out of it. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I said, you know, why do you really want it? You know, oh, and they were oh, they were doing two things that I I thought were silly. We want to be able to serve in the military. 
What? I don't even, you know, yeah. you, you had the way out for crying out I'm, loud. Bullshit. You know? That's the question they'll get me to government. <laughs> you know, so, the only way so I work for the government is if I'm, if I'm sorting mail. That's it. Yeah. I don't want a gun on my back. Well, you're working for the government, aren't you? Well, the city. But I, I would never, I'm telling you, if I had to get drafted, I would have ran the cabinet. My mother would have got me out of here. I, I would have got out of here. I never would have got. I, I admit it. I, I would be a chicken shit. I don't want to kill anybody. Well, I got to live with for the rest of my life. I got to kill somebody. I, uh, you'd be on the comic book hard. patrol. Well, I didn't have to. I didn't have to be drafted because I had already served. So you know, by the time the Vietnam you know, War started, I had f just fulfilled, finished f fulfilling my obligation to this wonderful country of ours. Yes. Yeah. So were you a red coat or a blue coat? I would have been no coat. <laughs> I would have been, I would have been get the coat out of I, uh, Valley yeah. Fort, really I, that I, cold? I want to show you what kind of a Navy guy it I was. I want, to t I want to show you what kind of Navy guy I was. Uh, there were two kinds of pants you could wear in the Navy. One was the pants with the 13 buttons, the flap right. and the 13 bell buttons. That, no, they were all bell bottoms. Oh. Yeah. And then there was... And they created these after a while. Uh, the zipper. I I couldn't stand the zipper. I like the buttons. I mean, even if I had to take a wicked piss, I could get out of those thirteen buttons pretty fast. The zipper is quick. That's that's the kind of navy guy I was. I said, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be in the navy, I'm going old school. Of course, you wear the hat. For the most part, I yeah, I wore the hat and everything. Yeah, but I, what happened was uh, they then sent me to the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood, which I had been working at getting that. I, I can't to this day, I can't remember. Uh, I, I I can't remember exactly how I pulled it off. But I, I, I uh, from the day I got into the Navy, I was writing them at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. I'm a broadcaster. You should bring me in. And finally, they did. They, uh, you know, they called the uh, Department of Defense and said, "We want this guy." And so they got me off the ship. Well, the minute I got off the ship and I was at Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, I never had to wear the uniform again. In fact, the only day we wore the uniform was on Armed Forces Day, and everybody would show up wearing their various uh, uh, accoutrements, you know, their various costumes. Um, and uh, it, it was uh, it was a uh, it was uh, you know that that that's the only day that we ever uh, we ever wore it. Otherwise, I didn't have to do that. Hey, uh, Ray. You, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, there we go. mute yourself. I just had to turn my phone around. Yeah, there we go. There he is. Okay, let me uh, transition over to him. So, there Alex, yeah. uh, did you get any medals or awards uh, uh, during your service? No, I um, um, I had always been a Navy seaman throughout the most of the two years that I was there. You start out as a seaman apprentice, and then you become a seaman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 and then, uh, just as I was being mustered out, I got I became a petty officer third class. So I had the the big nice. Oh. But because the seaman only you had only like two hashes and that was it, but this was like a patch with the eagle and everything and it was a well, very nice third class. But uh, and if I had stayed there, you know, I probably could have worked my way up the ranks to petty officer first class and you know whatever. But uh, that wasn't what I was intending to do, so I got out of there okay, you know, and I I uh, <coughs> got my top secret clearance. I think two days before I got out. Uh, oh. You know, it took them two years to get my top secret clearance. I could have been stealing secrets all along, you know. <laughs> but we 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 worked in uh, we were we had to wear we had to wear sports coats and ties and jackets, you know. That yeah. was the uniform that we wore yeah. there. Well, that's uh, you know. I mean, I would think that most people in radio. Uh, I know in the seventies and sixties. They wore T-shirts and uh, and and jeans, but uh, wouldn't you think that early on that people would be wearing sport coat and jacket when they went to a studio as a professional? Uh, usually, yeah. 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 Although I, I'm trying to remember what did I wear when I went to radio. Now, I would wear maybe a, I would maybe wear a nice pair of pants and a and a, and a shirt, a dress sure, shirt. Yeah. 
but uh, I don't know that I'd necessarily be wearing a sport coat or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you ready to uh, move on to uh, Epstein getting stabbed? Or what we don't know if he stabbed himself. Well, we don't know what we don't know what happened. He may have uh, tried to commit suicide or pretend like he was committing suicide. Try to get uh, but out. But they found him passed out in his uh, uh, cell, cell in a fetal position, mm. and the, and and mar marks around his neck. So they don't know. Maybe he tried to hang himself. Maybe <laughs> somebody tried to choke him. Yeah. He did have a cellmate. But they say the cellmate, while he is in there, he's a, he's a policeman, by the way, his cellmate, who is in there uh, being charged with murder. Uh, uh, and But uh, his lawyer got on TV and said, no way this guy would uh, would try to attack Epstein. You know? Yeah. So, you know. He's probably happy that he's in there with a guy like Epstein because if he's a cop in jail, they have a tough time. Yeah, uh, I would imagine, yeah. yeah. But he's in there for, for murder. Did you hear, by the way, I mean, this is something we should discuss, I suppose, that the, um, the Trump administration is reinstituting the death penalty in federal oh, yeah. prisons. Federal. Uh, and they have uh, six guys on the docket for January. Uh, in the last, I don't know how many years, they only had executed three guys. No, they did. Uh, they, did they had a hiatus because yeah. of the question about the uh, efficacy of using the cocktails they were giving them. Okay. I, I forgot how many years it's been since they had executed someone. And, uh, but there were I think three. Been, I think 15 years. Yeah. So 16 years ago, three got executed and that was it. Mm -hmm. And. Now, yeah, is it six guys they've got on? Uh, I think it's six, yeah. And, and listen, they're all very horrible people. I saw the crimes. Uh, one guy, you know, murdered a 15-year-old girl and her mother. Another one killed a whole family with a 14-year-old girl. And, I mean, they were these were terrible, horrible crimes. Uh, if, if anybody deserved the death penalty, okay, it would be these guys. And I'm still against it. You know, I just don't think it serves any purpose. And, um, uh, but they're, they're going to put them to death. So the government is now in the business of not only uh, kidnapping children, but they're into killing people again. So. Yeah, and That's they're pro-life. Huh? And they're pro-life. They're pro-life, but they're, they're, they're kidnapping children. Uh, they, they, that came out today uh, in uh, what's happening down at the border that they would take children away from their parents and then send their parents back to South America. Well, the and kids and, are and, and a congressman today got up and said, this is kidnapping, plain and simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah the kids are worth more. You know, you can sell them for more. Yeah. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah. They should just send them back together then, no? But, you know, I just, I, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think we're yeah, good teeth. I don't think reinstituting the death penalty, uh, uh, it's not, it doesn't help anybody, you know? It doesn't make anybody... You don't think it deters? No. Oh, no. 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 Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, there's an old story about uh, Clinton Duffy, who for years had been the warden of San Quentin, which in, in those days, hell, there was an execution every week. I used to drive by uh, there, and you'd see the white smoke coming out of the out of this funnel in the gas chamber. And um, Clinton Duffy said that he he did a kind of survey over the years of everybody that he, he had to preside over hundreds of executions, literally, and that he asked each and every one of them, uh, did you think about the fact that you would wind up in that gas chamber if you killed that person that you killed? And he said, not once did anybody say yes. That, that, yeah. it, you know, he wanted to see if it was a deterrent, and he said he came to the conclusion that it wasn't a deterrent; it was just a punishment. I, um, uh, when I was growing up, my best friend lived in Scarborough, which is next to Ossining and Briarcliff Manor. Yeah. And uh, Sing Sing Prison is in Ossining. Yeah. And when, because uh, I did a lot of, I stay at his place overnight. Uh, a lot of sleepovers, you know, parents bring you there, mm -hmm. friends since seven years old. They would have an execution at, uh, at, at Sing Sing, and the lights would dim 
uh, in the house, you know. So you always knew if the lights were dimming, they were they were offing somebody. That's amazing because my air conditioner does the same thing. So <laughs> you know, uh, I I um, um, I had heard that that happened, and there must have been some bad electrical system or something because usually most of these. Most of these uh, prisons that had the electric chair had their own generator. Yeah. Well, you know, we had um, uh, Con Ed uh, in that area. And in those years, they just had built Indian Point power plant. But still, uh, the lights would dim. Do you know why the electric chair was created as a uh, method of execution? No. Why? Do you know who invented it? Oh, no. That's it. Okay. It was, uh, it was created by Thomas Edison. Really? Yes. Okay. And here's the reason it was created by Thomas Edison. He was having a fight with, uh, who, who's it, Tesla. Tesla? Yeah. Tesla. Uh, and they were fighting over AC versus DC. And uh, uh, Edison was all for DC. Okay. And he had all his money in DC. All those power plants that he built in New York City and up and down New York State were all DC. So he had a right large current. investment in DC. AC, however, was a more efficient process because what alternating happened? Alternating current. Well, what? Yeah, alternating current. Because what happened was, is if you had to, you, there was only a certain distance you could send the electricity before it started fading with DC. So you had to have all these power plants along the way to amplify the electricity. Whereas with AC, it maintained a constant power throughout the whole system. You could send it all hundreds of miles. And it would still maintain its strength and not have to have these uh, these power plants to, you know, rebuild up power. So he wanted to show that D AC was bad and DC was good. So he built, uh, they were looking for a way to do ex executions because they had been shooting people and hanging them and so on. And they wanted something that maybe was less grisly. I don't know how they came up with this as being less grisly, but... How about less, the guillotine? Yeah. So <laughs> they, um, uh, 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 Edison said, well, I'll build you an electric chair, and we'll be using AC current. And the idea was is that people would then see what AC current does to a human being and how it kills people, oh, and, and they will love use? DC all the time. Yeah, and that's why that's why he invented the electric chair, was to to do that. He there were also movies. You ever see the movie of an elephant being electrocuted? Old yeah. movie. Yeah, that was Edison doing that. He killed that <laughs> elephant to show people that's AC current for you. You know. Wow. And they got problems with Eric Trump. What? Going hunt Eric. Doesn't he hunt uh, uh, trophy uh, oh, uh, yeah. animals in Africa? Yeah, he's a, he's a. Uh, what are you vaping there, Ray? Ray? He's a vaper? <laughs> I, I, yep. uh, he yes, just turned off. His, You're vaping. Yeah. What are you? Uh, I am vaping. Are you vaping tobacco? That's cancer. No CBD. I'm surprised he's a. Vaper. Oh, it's CBD. Oh, okay. CBD. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does it work? <laughs> you're breaking. You're... It's my arthritis pain has been so much better. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Really? I should give it to my mother. Yeah. You're yeah, my, my like my joint, my arthritis pain has been way better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I do it like twice well, I, a day. It's I, great. Really? Because there's some question whether CBD is works. You know. And I you... know. Um, if I. The one, if I use the uh, the one made out of cannabis, it's like that still has some THC in it. That one definitely works. Uh, I'm trying the hemp one in the car because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, yeah. But the one with a little bit of THC, uh, you know, really, I think it does work. Yeah. But by the way, how 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 much has uh, smoking pot uh, uh, ca caught on in California? I guess pretty well, huh? Oh, it's incredible. Like, if you go to San Francisco, uh, you can be in a crowd. You know, a lot you used to smell cigarette smoke. You yeah. can be in a, in a bunch of people you, and you smell weed just like uh, like it was cigarettes now. You always did. I, yeah. Well, it's really prevalent now because, I mean, you can, there's you, you, so many uh, 
places to buy it. Yeah. Like the mission, there's got to be ten stores. Of course, uh, people people who are vaping it because I have a vape here for, with pot, and it doesn't have a oh, pot. Yeah. There's no pot smell to that. You couldn't tell what but right. what I was what I'd be vaping. You know. Do you get the yeah. big cloud of smoke or vapor? Yeah. When you ex yeah yeah yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, it. it uh, um, it's it, you know it's it's certainly a great delivery system, but it doesn't have the social aspect to it. However, here's the problem with marijuana, uh, and why legalization has to be somewhat regulated. You say you go into a restaurant or you go into a place, some place, a bar or whatever, and you just smell this pervasiveness of, of the smell of weed. Well, that means that it's being delivered to your system. Right. And you didn't ask for it, you know. And that's the problem with marijuana. I mean, that's the problem with secondhand smoke. smoke. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you, you know, like a girlfriend, when she likes to smoke the pot here, she, she starts smoking it. I say, would you please blow it in the other direction? Because I don't feel like getting high. I've got a show to do. Because if I didn't, I'd be just as high as she was. That's a contact high, I think. Yeah, contact high. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, you, you, you're still going to inhale it, you know, so. Uh, I have to tell you, though, like when I have insomnia, the regular weed <clears throat> helps me sleep a lot. Like as long as I don't do too much, if I just take like one hit, I mean, I sleep Ray, really better. there's an yeah. easier way and it's not and it's not what? addictive. You just what? turn on the rerun of GabNet and <laughs> put, put some uh, earphones well, in. I have a better, I have a better seat. I have a sleep in 30 seconds. I have a better suggestion for you, and we put them up every Friday over the weekend. Uh, just put on Michael Snyder's movie reviews, and you'll be out <laughs> yeah. in no time. That's pretty exciting stuff, you know. <laughs> hey, I, you were saying you had problems sleeping. I was going to tell you my nutritionist recommends magnesium. Uh, there's a. I take, uh, mag I take magnesium every day for my, yeah. no, my no. leg cramps. Yeah. There's a product I, I, called Calm. And yeah. if you mix it with water and drink it before you go to bed, uh, it helps you sleep. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I don't I, know. I, tonight, I tonight I'm going to... My problem is is that I am um, weaning off of Clonopin, which I took for 15 years, and that's why I can't sleep. So it's like the magnesium doesn't do anything to help me. I mean, my, I tried it. My yeah. friend gave me two Clonopins when I was going to Australia. And you, hang, and you gonna... hung your clothes on the clothesline with them? Yeah, yeah. And I took those uh, one Clonopin going to, I had to go to Seoul, Korea, and then down to Sydney, Australia. I took one on the way to Seoul, one on the way to, uh, to Sydney. I felt I was asleep the whole time. I put a little sign on my uh, shoulder that said, don't wake me for anything. And yeah. I slept. I woke up 45 minutes before I got into Korea and then two and a half hours before I got into Sydney. That stuff is great, and there's no hangover. No, I know, but you can get addicted to it. Uh. Like, so I was addicted to it for 15 years, and it's super hard to get off of. Your, uh. your brain doesn't, uh, you know, you know well, I, I'm going, I'm reducing by like 5% a month. So it's going to take me. I've already been doing it for a year. It's probably going to take me another year and a half to get off. Well, I have, two, I have two things that can put me to sleep. One is uh, this medicine that I have for my, uh, uh, my uh, neuropathy. Uh, the, you know, the, what do you call it? The, Lyrica? The numb feet and so on. Oh, uh, yeah, there was some drug you were taking yeah, for that. And Lyrica, right? No, 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 no. It's uh, Lyrica is not what I'm taking. It's something else. What's it called? Gabapentin? Gabapentin. 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 I can take that, and that'll put me to sleep. Uh, I can also take uh, uh, Xanax, and that puts me to sleep really nicely. But I've decided not, I decided not to take them. And I haven't taken them for two weeks. And I've been sleeping, going to sleep very nicely every night. But lately, with this fear of uh, the cancer and all that, uh, I wake up in the morning, and I'm in a terror. Literally a terror, I'm, and I can't go back to sleep because my mind is just whirling about, you know, how am I going to solve this problem? And it just, you know, it so bothers me. And also because I read all this stuff on the Internet, which is the stupidest thing you can do. Um, and now I'm worried, you know, about what this new doctor is going to say and so on and so forth. And so uh, Shecky today said, fuck it, 
Ten, I take a Xanax, okay? Oh, you, you know, not yet. And, and I think I will. I, I just want a good night's sleep and not to wake up feeling like I'm in terror, you know? I mean, it was so yeah. bad that I was going, I can't get this out of my mind. I can't get my mind thinking about something else, you know? Uh, I finally found something to think of, and that was what would be the testimony when we have our court trial for the department. Uh, and then I went back to thinking about the problem again. And so... Uh, you know, Xanax probably will put me to sleep tonight and keep me there until I get up. And when I get up, I'll be so groggy from the uh, from the Xanax that I won't be depressed. You know, well, try. Well, how, how do you how do you deliver your magnesium? Is it in a pill or? It's a pill. Yeah, I take uh, magnesium every day. Yeah. Just don't take the Xanax for more than a week at a time because uh, you can get hooked on it really. Well, easy. no, you can get hooked on it if you take if if you uh, 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 if, if you say start taking larger and larger doses. I always kept my dose well, exactly the same. Yeah, me too. But I, after a while, you still get. Hooked. I mean, it's horror. I can't. I can't. I my doctor had me go off of it too fast, and I had the most. It was like I was going off heroin or something. It was horrible. Uh, so I had to start over. Well, our, really our doctor slow. tends to think that, you know, it's not... Uh, Xanax is, is probably the best thing you could take if you would need something for sleep. That it's... Of, of all the things you could take, it's the least uh, of a problem. You but know, anyway, yeah, uh, uh, so I, I like me, Valium. Me, me talking... That's an old drug. What do you Valium know? Valium is long... It lasts for two weeks in your system. Xanax only lasts for like six hours. When, yeah. when I had the hair transplant, they gave me Valium. They gave me uh, hydrocodone, and they also gave me some Valium. I didn't like the uh, uh, what is the hydrocodone also known as? Uh, I, 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 I know I'm not sure what else, what the uh, other name anyway, is. Anyway, anyway. Well, I didn't like that. But I liked the Valium. The Valium was relaxing, and uh, it was all right. Do you, you don't can... remember Valium when it came with a hole in the middle? Uh, Lifesavers? <laughs> no, yeah. That, well, I asked, why does it have a hole in the middle? And my doctor said, oh, because it's a Lifesaver. Uh, really? But, but then they, no. they put out the Valium without the hole in it. So. It, was legit, it was really little. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I think when you get a colonoscopy, they give you a lot of Valium. Yeah. So, so you don't remember the pain. If well, you're not at Kaiser. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You had a colonoscopy <laughs> without get, being. Wait no, not a colonoscopy. Sorry. Yeah, colonoscopy. Yeah, yeah. Without being put out? No, I did. But they also give you a lot of Valium in case, because they don't they don't put you out. They didn't put me out so hard that I couldn't wake up. Like the first time I had one, I did wake up in the middle of it, oh, and wow. and I actually was watching it, and I remember myself oh. saying, "Oh, that hurts." But I don't remember the pain. No, I, I remember know, myself I had saying. a cystoscopy, and they don't put you out. But no, I no they don't it. put you out for that. No, you know why? Because they they really want to make you suffer. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but but uh, you know, uh, if I have to have a, uh, a, a, a what do you call it a, a, a biopsy uh, from this other doctor, I'm going to tell them though that I want to be put out. That uh, I, you know. I don't know that being put out is safe. You know, uh, every time you it's go not. under, uh, uh, you know, anesthesia, uh, it's not safe. You know, you, you're probably better off just being given well, a the, bunch the, of drugs my, and go to my, Lala. My bad but, doctor was, was going to do it with putting me out using propofol. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've had it. I, th I think it's, it's acceptable. If it's done by a proper doctor, knows what yeah, he's but doing. That's one of the major risks of, of an operation is the anesthesia. Anesthesiologists have to uh, have a lot of insurance. Yeah, uh, look what it did because to they have a Jackson. certain percentage that will die. <laughs> yeah, but Michael Jackson was taking it recreationally. He wasn't. He, yeah. he was taking it himself. Yeah. No, he had a doctor, and the doctor. Yeah, but the, <laughs> they were doing it for sleep. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, you don't use that drug to put somebody to sleep. I mean, you're using it. You're, you're, you're putting somebody out for an operation. I mean, I think it's a wonderful yeah. drug because it's like, you, first of all, when you're going under, just as you're going under, it's just this nice little poof, this, this wonderful release and so on. And the next thing you know, the doctor is saying, well, it's all, you know, how you doing? 
you know, yeah. and you're going fine. And well, within about exactly. 10 minutes, you're on your feet walking out of the place. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I have an interesting story for you, though. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. The, the craziest thing happened today. Charlie knows what I'm going to say because I already told him oh. about it. Yeah. yeah. But my wife and I, we, we travel a lot. Mm-hmm. So we're going to... We're going to start traveling kind of, you know, by basically by RV, you know, Mm -hmm. so on our trips and stuff. And then we'll probably retire that way and go full time Mm -hmm. because, you know, we're we're pretty into the like there's this whole thing nowadays with like the RV lifestyle. I mean, people get rid of their houses. They live on the road, you know, really not like airstreams or whatever. It's just the craziest thing. I, I follow some people on the Internet that make these videos on YouTube. You know, they travel pretty much full time and, you know, whatever. And they're doing this live chat. Mm -hmm. And just out of nowhere, there's a comment from this guy named Charlie Wallace. And I'm like, is that Charlie (laughs) Wallace that I know? You know, like, you know, that I'm looking. His picture's really tiny, you know. And I'm like, well, he is black. You know, it does look like (laughs) Charlie Wallace. And uh, so I sent him a message. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm, You know, I love those. It's just the craziest thing that's out of fucking nowhere. Like, it's just totally crazy there he appears you know and i'm like man it, it's either the world is really small or gadnet is really big so which do you i mean <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe gadnet is just really big yeah it is big uh, <laughs> people are everywhere how big is it uh, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway it's so. a worldwide television network <clears throat> hey uh josh does this mean if you get an rv you gotta What's join the good shit? sam club <laughs> uh, they, yeah, they have that right. That that's that company that owns uh, what Camping World or is affiliated. Yeah, with them. yeah, yeah. is that what it is? Hey, you get good, good discounts. Good I'm in it. You get good yeah. discounts. I'm in it. Yeah, yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not supposed to be too bad. They have. No, uh, just don't. You don't. Down, you don't help. buy your RV from them. That's for damn sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff, rip you blind. Yeah. Hmm. Jeff. Uh, yes, Jeff. I, Jeff. Uh, I got something that you guys might be interested in. So yesterday, uh, we were just about ready to start eating dinner, which was kind of late, I don't know, 8 o'clock or something like that. And and we're kind of just about to sit down and eat, and somebody's at the door. Okay. I don't know who the hell that is. from System UI Server. Low oh. battery. Thanks, Alexa. <laughs> wow. What was okay. that? What was that? That's that the was, end of the story. <laughs> one of my batteries was unplugged. Okay. So anyway, I open the door and there's this guy and a lady. And I don't know who the hell they are. And they go. Uh, we're to see you, and um, we'd like to tell you that uh, we were just in the uh, in the co. No, oh boy, I gotta say it right. Off of South Africa, <laughs> out of South America, there's an island that's like about two thousand miles out there. Mm-hmm. The Galapagos. Yeah, the Galapagos Islands. Yeah, Galapagos. Oh, yeah. 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 He went there. Yeah. And they said, well, diving. we have a card from a friend of yours to give you. Oh, there might have been a scam. What the hell? You, no, there's no scam. <laughs> anyway, you let them in. They, they just got back from there about a week ago. Yeah. And they live in Connecticut. And they said, your friends were there a month ago. And I said, oh, yeah, I, I remember that. I, and I never even thought about it. I, I never knew that they had. So they give him this card, and it's from our friend who had went there. And, and they had a place in the island where people would leave notes. And they would leave the notes for somebody else to take it to the uh, additional houses and deliver it and meet a new friend. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Did you get uh, a million dollars with it, too? No. (laughs) No. But, you know, they were nice people. We got in there. We 
drank a couple of glasses of wine and talked about where they went and how they got there and why they went. And, and you know, and he said, did you, did you ever meet our friends? No. <laughs> you know, they, they weren't there at the same time. Do you, but, do you know anything about Galapagos? Yeah, a little bit. It's uh, the biodiversity never... is there. It's it's so removed that the uh, animals that are there uh, didn't have to adapt the way they are right. uh, here. So uh, they're no, almost Phil, prehistoric. You've got it. You've got it all wrong. Uh, okay, well, give it. To you, you. You've got it all wrong. No, I understand it's the same thing. Uh, to yeah. begin with, to begin with, uh, if you want to go to the Galapagos, uh, they only let so many people in at a given time because uh, they don't want to ruin the biodiversity. This is where Darwin went and came up with yeah. his theory of, uh, of evolution. Yeah. evolution. And, and basically, basically it was that this island was very remote, and a mm -hmm. lot of animals would come from the mainland, and they, they got there by just, you know, like they'd hop on a piece of wood or whatever, mm -hmm. and it would be swept into the Galapagos. So a lot of uh, birds that started out, or animals or whatever, that started out in other parts of the world wound up on the Galapagos Islands because of the, 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 the uh, currents. Uh, currents and so on. And then what happened is that the, the birds who looked a certain way would then start adapting to the surroundings and to the needs of the area and so on. And um, that's how Darwin, when he went there, came up with his theory of, uh, of, of uh, evolution. Uh, and uh, th that's what happened there. And, and so there are animals on, uh, in the Galapagos that you won't see anywhere in the world because they, right. have, they have literally created a, uh, uh, adapted to their environment, as it were. So. And so do they have predators? Well, yeah, I guess they do. Oh, what, yeah. What's that uh, Gila monster kind of thing that, oh, uh, yeah. that has the... Uh, saliva that's so toxic. Komono dragon. Komono dragon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think there are very many of those in the world, actually, and I don't think they're any... in the Galapagos. I don't know if they're in the Galapagos. I have to yeah, look that up. And you know who got bitten by one? Uh, he was married to Sharon Stone, and he was the uh, uh, the San Francisco Chronicle editor. Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, do you remember? Uh, yeah, you I, probably I, knew him. Uh, no, I didn't, but I I, I know the. Uh, you know, I know. You know I'm, I'm talking I'm trying, about? To I'm trying to remember the name. Yeah, he oh. got bit in in the in his heel, in his, uh, and uh, he almost lost his leg. I thought they were big in Indonesia. Those Komodo dragons. Oh, oh, Komodo. Uh, Komodo. Uh, How do we? Uh, let's see. Komodo. Komodo. K o m o. K o m o t o. Komodo dragon. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Let me yeah. look at I'm it. pretty sure Galapagos is where they're at. Well, let me see here. How yeah. poisonous is the Komodo dragon? I think that it's like some of the, some of the, uh, they have different species there, even from island to island, because they're so isolated. So, like, yeah. they'll have a bird on one island, and then on another island, that same bird will have a different beak. Yeah. They can't even, they can't even mate mm. anymore. They're, like, different. Yeah, it's amazing. Because of the kind of food. Yeah, that's they on, say on it's, it's saliva. It can kill you. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, uh, no, uh, it is species of lizard found in the Indonesian islands of Komodo, Rinka, mm -hmm. Flores, right. and uh, Gil Montag. It says nothing about. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Galapagos? No, yeah. it says nothing about Galapagos. Well, let me find that. You can look it up. I just found them on uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, so Wikipedia have a lodge. Drink for Phil. <laughs> oh, have a drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. So anyway, uh, while Phil's looking for that, you, you know, we can continue here. Doing By the that. way, Josh, you were right on Nicole Wallace. My apologies. What? No, no, it's okay. I, I mean, I, I wasn't saying you were wrong. I just, I did not. No, I, I, I swore for, one day I thought I heard her say she worked yeah. for the Obama administration then at one point. I just didn't remember that. I was like, wow, I can't imagine. Yeah, was, yeah, that's, well, I knew she worked for Bush, but I thought she said yeah. she worked for Obama the last, yeah. the I last. just, I just couldn't imagine it because she used to say things, yeah, yeah. you know, that I used to, like, drive me crazy, but then I'd be like, but she's just so cute, so, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> 
episode. You know, it was like uh, when that uh, Dana Perino or whatever was the press secretary. It was like, well, well, well who, who's the, who, who's who's MSNBC's White House correspondent? I think she's hot. Uh, uh, who do they have? Who's that? What'd you say? Uh, um, uh, uh, this woman on uh, uh, who's the, the uh, is the White House correspondent for MSNBC. Uh, oh. Let me see here. Uh, Which one? The um, uh, MSNBC reporters. MSNBC. There's reporters. a couple of them. There's a went Katie O'Donnell and then uh, that. Uh, yeah. What the hell's her name? There you go. That's not a Komodo. That's not a Komodo. No. Uh, no. 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 That a squirrel. <laughs> that's what's on, that's what's on uh, the Galapagos. It's like a squirrel yeah. that put his face in the no, face. This is out. pretty one ugly lizard. <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of lizard, but it's the... you know. I, also, there's uh, that, there's the over face. at o, over at MSNBC. Yeah, wow. there's there's Casey Hunt, who I yeah. I said must have had a horrible time in high school because they go around <laughs> yeah. going hi hi Hasey. <laughs> oh yeah, Hallie Jackson was one of them. Now I'm trying to look. Uh, here, then, here they uh, all are. They keep that other coming. Kristen Welker is the other one. Uh, Rachel Maddow. No. <laughs> Rachel Maddow. Yeah. <laughs> I only wear black. Let me see here. Where, where, which one is the one I'm thinking of? What? what which one did you mention? You mentioned uh, Haley Jackson or uh, no. Kristen? Kristen, whatever her name is. No, I. I don't see any pictures of, of her. I think Casey Hunt's their congressional correspondent. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think she covers like Capitol Hill. Yeah, I think she covers the Hill. I don't remember their White House correspondent. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I think it is Kristen Welker. Yeah. Yeah, she's hot. She's the one standing out there. Yeah, she's hot. Wait, standing out there? Huh. Standing yeah. out there in front of the White House. Yeah, well, they're standing out there in front of the White House. Outstanding in her White House. Uh, outstanding in her White House. Um, uh, yeah, here are some of the other names. Yeah, Casey Hunt, Kristen Welker. Um, but you were right. Uh, it's, I got. Uh, it says here there's no Komodo dragons on the Galapagos Islands. Really? Yeah. Nope. So now you have the opportunity... To go back and capture this for the show and put this on a quick button so that all the time you can replay Phil saying, hey, you were right. Everybody you drink. Did but you guys right. hear Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Charlie's holding some up. up. What are you, what are you? That's a Komodo dragon. Uh, wait, wait a minute, hold on a second. Just be quiet, everybody, so I can try and get the video on that. Let me see here. Start talking there, Charlie, oh, yeah. so we can see it. Yeah. Charlie, that, that's, everybody that's else Komodo shut up. Dragon right there. Wait a minute. It, 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 you still haven't keyed off the uh, the audio. Yeah, talk more, Charlie. Yeah, that's the Komodo dragon. Wow! If for some reason you're not, it's not. Oh, there you go. Okay, everybody, be quiet. Be yeah. quiet. Okay. Uh, let me see here. There we go. That's a Komodo dragon. Okay. Yeah. It's a, uh, this is like Wild Kingdom. Kingdom. He's about 250 pounds. There was a movie with the Marlon Brando. One of his best. I love this film with the Matthew Broderick called The Freshman. Oh, yeah. In which he's hired by Brando. I love that. Kind of playing like the godfather uh, to go get this Komodo dragon and, and take it over to New Jersey. And uh, they, they, they literally were wrestling this thing and everything else. But it wasn't a Komodo dragon they were using. They were using a monitor lizard. Because you, really, there's so few Komodo dragons, and nobody would allow them as an endangered species to be yeah. used as a prop in a movie. You know. Mm. Of course, yeah. today we probably do special effects and create it. Uh, well, what about when they put the glass up, and then they have the snakes on one side of the glass? Didn't they do that for uh, what was the uh, uh, movie that Spielberg? Did? I think it was Spielberg. Raiders uh, of the Lost Ark. Oh no! No, Raiders no, of the Lost was, Ark. Yeah, Raiders. When he when he's down in the snake pit and he's looking at the snakes, oh, yeah. you can actually see a reflection in the glass yeah. in front of him. It's protecting him. Yeah. That's okay. I don't like snakes. But neither does Indiana <laughs> Jones. Yeah. yeah. He hates them. I hate them. Snakes, snakes on a plane. Too. Snakes, I yeah. hate them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so listen, uh, uh, Scott hasn't said much of anything tonight, so I'd like to hear something from Scott. 
I've been playing with my new iPhone. Your new iPhone? <laughs> you get an iPhone 5? <laughs> well, I did go off for a 4S. I did. Yeah. I, I, went, I got a... Oh, my X, God. A, X, I had a 4S, yes. And yeah. now I got one of these uh, uh, XSs or something. XR. A 10? XR. I got one, too. Man, that face recognition's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's it great. Is. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, I try to use the face face recognition, and it just says you're ugly. <laughs> and it works. Second opinion. I uh, I yeah I uh, I'm so used to the face recognition, I don't even think twice about it. You know, but yeah. you know they're doing away with the face recognition. Why? Because they've got they coming up with something else for you to be able oh, to turn retina? your phone. It's I think it again. It's using your thumb or whatever. I don't know. Uh, uh, penis recognition. Uh, penis recognition. Yeah. <laughs> my my iPad uses the thumb, my phone uses the face, and you know you forget. There I am with the iPad in front of my face, and it's not doing it. You know? Do the new iPads have face recognition, or are they I still know. thumb? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Phil just well, shrieks. Yeah. It's like ah! my wife bought an iPad Pro, and it's got face, and I just bought my my daughter a uh, a Mac. Uh, air today, and it's got the thumbprint uh, thing in the corner. You yeah. just put your thumb on it, and it unlocks yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So you know, but I, I love it when I with the with the face recognition because I use my my wallet in my iPhone to pay for the cab, for instance. Yeah. And you just click twice, and it looks at your face, and then it lets you pay for it. You yeah, know? this thumbprint thing, you can pay for everything and everything with the thumbprint. Yeah. Oh look! Look at that sunset in. Uh... Oh wow, that is amazing! I'm telling you, that is the darkest orange sunset I've ever seen here. Wow! Wow! I don't know if you can Wait see it very well. Wait a minute. Let me let me just cut to it there. What's see, left see, of the golden? See everybody? You see what he's Damn, doing? Damn! But it's so dark, Phil. Look at that. I mean, it's so orange, super orange. Is yeah. there pollution? That means it's gonna be hotter than hell. Tomorrow. Maybe. Hmm. Does that mean it's going to be hotter than hell tomorrow? Yeah, this weekend's supposed to be hotter than a whorehouse at high noon. By the way, <laughs> this is this is the hottest summer worldwide in the history of recording temperatures. And Europe is is pretty hot right oh, now. Oh, it was 106 in Paris. Vic. Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine's been in Europe for the last uh, last month, and everywhere he's gone, it's been. Like hundreds. Not yeah. in Texas. We haven't hit a hundred yet. Yeah, mm. but but it, it, it's, it's also this is the hottest. This is the hottest summer on record in the United States. Uh, mm. There is something yeah. going amiss it on this planet. Okay. There, there's no global warming. There's no, no it's, it's just the way the the atmosphere is is going around. That's right. You know? <laughs> things, things move. It's the way the atmosphere is going around. Is that you your science? Is, is that is that your scientific? When they meet, you got a front. Is that your scientific <laughs> explanation, Phil? <laughs> you got a low and a high, and they and they get together, and that's called a front. Yeah. Wow! So, yeah. I bet you, it almost sounds like you got that right from Christian talk radio. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Praise Jesus. I, I, yeah, Praise hallelujah. The Lord. I got it from the uh, Christian Science Monitor. Yeah, I, I, was, wa I was watching this thing, as I say, on the planets, and they would go, uh, and so Mars, when it was created 4.5 billion years ago, and I'm thinking, how can that be? The, the world's only 5,000 years old, according to the Christians. <laughs> You know, yeah, well. I mean, um, how can they figure out 4.5 billion years ago? I mean, how do they know it's not 3.5 billion? Well, years I also ago? have an answer for all those religiosos out there, by the way, about you know this whole thing with uh, uh, with 5,000 years. It says in the Bible that God created the heaven and the earth, and on the what day did He uh, consider? Seventh uh, day. Uh, 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 created the heaven and the earth. Uh, on the first day, but it doesn't say how long. It, it, you don't. You don't have a day there, right? right. You know. Right. Uh, and uh, so, therefore, that first day could have been billions of years. Exactly. So that's how I explain it to a religioso, and then tell him to the tell him to yeah. shut the hey, fuck up. I, I heard your new uh, <laughs> uh, promos at the uh, beginning before uh, uh, Larry Bubbles. They were very good. I didn't have new promos. 
Yeah, yeah. You had, uh, well, they were new for me. I, uh, you had, <laughs> I it played. It sounded like you, Albert did one. He did one. Loyal listener. That's one of the ones he's done d- done for me yeah. recently, but another one is so old, it's, it goes back to the beginning of GabNet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thanks for listening, Phil. It was also a Phil one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a Phil one. Well, we got to have you saying you were right, or I was wrong today. What did you say today? You said you were That's wrong. That's going to be a new like promo. That. Phil saying he yeah. was wrong. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, you right. Gotta yeah. Go get yeah. No, I, I probably didn't oh, say I was okay, wrong. Okay, gang. Okay, Alex gang. Right. Calm, calm down, Josh. Thank you. Scott, thank you. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. Chris, thank you. Phil, thank you. Kevin, thank you. Uh, 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 Tony, thank you. And uh, um, uh, Ray, thank you so much. Uh, why don't you guys all wave goodbye, and I'll wave back at you, and the audience will also wave as well. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we're going to hang up on them now, unceremoniously, so that we can make the lines ready for the next guy who's coming on. That's Jack Bishop, and he's going to do a show called The Intersection. Okay? Uh, we will uh, be back again tomorrow night. Uh, there's no uh, Damien because he's uh, taking a couple of weeks off. Uh, so there's no show with Damien, but there's a show with me at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, you got to do it. It's the law. Tell her I love her. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>